Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. If you'd like to stay connected with us outside of today's digital broadcast, be sure and download our free mobile app for your smartphone. Through the app, you can watch more of Dr. Dodd's sermons, read daily devotions, access our Bible reading plan, and so much more. To download this free app, just open the App Store on your smartphone and search for Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. We hope this app is an encouragement to you and that using it will help you grow in your relationship with Christ. Thank you again for joining us today, and we hope you enjoy this episode of Higher Aim. Well, welcome. I am glad that you have joined us this day for God's Word to be invested in your life. Hey, before we get started. I I want to invite you to do something uh, very proactively, and that is simply this. Get your cell phone, and I want you to text one of your friends or maybe one of your family members who is wrestling with doing the will of God. And in conversations that you've had with them, you know that's exactly where they are. They, They are struggling there. And so I want you to pick up your cell phone. Don't leave our broadcast, but pick up your cell phone right now and text either that friend or that family member that God has laid their name on your heart to invite to this broadcast this day. Would you do that? In fact, do it right now. And as you're doing that, I want to tell you a story. I'm sitting here in this chair with a coffee cup in my hand, as probably many of you are are doing just right now, possibly. And when you see a coffee cup, you think, coffee. Well, I've got to be honest with you. I have not always enjoyed, much less liked, coffee. I want to tell you a a little story uh, in that I grew up in a family of coffee drinkers. My mom, my dad, they both drank coffee. And I remember as a child tasting coffee from one of their cups. And I thought to myself, oh, gag me with a spoon. This is bitter. It's terrible. I don't want this in my mouth. And so all the way through school, all the way through college, I never drank coffee. I would rather drink tea or or a Coke uh, or lemonade or even water. Coffee was repulsive to me. Uh, But then I went to seminary. And when I had to experience the commute between Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, during the winter, things changed. Now, you who have ever lived in Texas know that there are only two seasons in Texas. There is July, where it's really hot, and February, where it's really cold. And it was February, and I was doing this commute every day between Dallas and Fort Worth, and the heater in my car broke. In fact, uh, it would not heat. It would only blow cold air. And here's the deal. While I was in seminary, uh, man, we were poor. Well, we were very poor. In fact, we were so poor, we couldn't even pay attention. And, and the sad story was the fix on getting the, the heater uh, repaired was probably more than the car was worth. And so during the winter, what I would have to do would be to drive in this cold car uh, all the way to Fort Worth and back again. So I doubled up my socks, and because I couldn't fix my heater, there was one other option, and that was to drink something hot and coffee, even as bitter as it was, became a daily staple in my life for survival. It kept me warm during the commute. And, you know, I learned to drink the cup. So today, I want us 
to look at a passage of Scripture that, well, hopefully, every time you see a coffee cup, you will remember what you are about to hear. So, hold on to your cup. Well, as you know, we've been in a study of John's gospel, taking a, a 10,000 foot look at the principles of the life of Jesus as he is revealing, telling us the story about the character of God and what God wants for our lives. And now we are in chapter 18 specifically. And Jesus is getting ready to be arrested. And he uses a phrase that is very, very important that is going to teach us this key characteristic that God wants us always to do his will, even when it is difficult. And I know that I'm talking to some of you today. In fact, I'm talking to all of us when God puts us in a position like that, and it's difficult to do his will. You need to hang with me today because I really believe that God's Spirit wants to speak to you about how to drink the cup, even when it's bitter. You ready? Why don't we read in... John chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. I want you to follow along with me. Here's what the scripture says. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was a garden, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priest and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Look at that question again. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Oh, man, what a story. Uh, if you have ever been to Israel, you know exactly where that happened. Remember, Jesus was there in the upper room with the disciples. That's where uh, communion, the, the Last Supper, took place. Uh, and there he would walk down toward the east, past the Temple Mount, uh, in between where Caiaphas' house was and the Temple Mount, and he would head toward the Garden of Gethsemane, which uh, is on the west side of the Mount of Olives. 
And in between the Temple Mount and the Mount of Olives is the Kidron Valley. It, it, it's, it's probably about a mile between the Garden of Gethsemane uh, and Caiaphas' house to the, the west. And it would be from Caiaphas' house area that the soldiers would come with Judas and walk down the Kidron Valley near probably the same path that Jesus would walk from the upper room all the way down past the Temple Mount, down the Kidron Valley, and right there on the side of the slope of the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane. You, you know the Scripture tells us in the Synoptic Gospels uh, about the agony that Jesus went through in the Garden of Gethsemane. John uh, skips that and moves right in to the arrest. And the Bible tells us that uh, in this event, after Jesus had agonized over prayer, through prayer, concerning uh, the cup that God had given him, and that was in that moment of crucifixion where God would take all of the sins, your sins, my sins, and put them on Jesus. There at the cross, that would be the moment that fellowship with God between the Father and the Son would cease. And the thought, the very thought of that separation, even for a moment, was too overwhelming. And that's what Jesus was, was praying through. And he prayed through. And you re remember that phrase, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And even though Jesus had prayed asking uh, if there was any way for this cup to be passed from him. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. I, I got to be honest with you, uh, drinking the cup that God often provides for us is difficult. You see, the cup, it's not the, the physical thing that I'm really talking about. It's what's inside the cup. When you look at a coffee cup, you always think coffee. Uh, if you look at a, a soda can, you're always thinking soda. But the issue here is not the cup, the physical cup, but what's inside the cup. Today, I need to tell you that it is the Father's cup that often he gives us. It was his in the very beginning, and he is offering it to you and to me. So what is the Father's cup that Jesus is referring to? He's referring to doing the will of God, even though it is difficult. And that's exactly who I want to talk to today. I need to uh, remind you that God is the one offering you the opportunity to do his will. And today, even though God's plan is for you to do his will, maybe what he has offered for you to drink right now in this season of your life it's difficult. I am talking to you who uh, have known and are in the process of continuing to know the pain, the loss, separation, dashed dreams. It's to you that my heart goes out who somehow or another your life and your life's path has taken a left turn at Albuquerque, and now you're in the desert. And you're wrestling with doing the will of God in continual obedience. And you're faced in the desert heat with whether you will 
make a difficult decision and do what God has called you to do, or you will try to navigate out of it. It's to you, I speak, who are trying to find just the next step to place uh, forward in your journey, and you're afraid to take the next step, and you're really struggling deeply. I, I need to tell you that right now, God wants you to understand how powerful his presence is in your life and what he wants to do through your life. But you've got to drink the cup. And maybe that's where you are. You want to drink the cup. You want to do God's will. But you're hesitant. You're, you're holding back. You, there's not that spiritual resolve in your life, and you're struggling right now to do what you know God has called you to do. I'm talking to you, child of God, who is struggling with spiritual maturity, and you would rather listen to someone else tell you what to do rather than listening to God and doing what his word has revealed to you to do. And that's a difficult place to be. It's a, a, a tough place to be. It, it, it's, it's full of conflict. It's full of stress. But the Father is offering you to drink the cup. For some of you who are watching today, the cup that the Father is offering you to do his will is salvation. He wants you to experience his salvation. And you are out of the will of God because you have never had an encounter with Jesus Christ and invited Jesus to come inside your life and be the Lord of your life. You're struggling between doing your life your way or doing life God's way. You're struggling with wanting to live in sin rather than live in the security of, let me give you a spiritual word, sanctification, that process of God making you holy. You don't want to give in. You're struggling with giving in and letting go of the reins of your life and inviting Jesus to be the Lord of your life. I need to tell you, you need to drink the cup. You need to turn from your sin and place your faith in Christ. But maybe, just maybe, I'm talking to you as a believer today. You met Jesus maybe as a child or uh, as a, a young adult. And now, uh, you're at that point, a difficult point in your life where you're, you're, you're having to make a decision between doing what God wants you to do or doing what your flesh is telling you to do. You need to learn how to drink the cup, that of obedience. The tilting of the cup is the step of obedience. And I pray that, that God will speak to you this day. For you see, yeah, you can't avoid the cup. There's no way that there cannot be the cup, because God's will is right here. However, I need to tell you that this passage reveals to us several important things, and I want you to write these down. First of all, I would share with you, there will always be well-meaning people who don't understand your cup. <laughs> uh, you know why? Because they don't understand. Uh, remember the, uh, the experience of of Simon Peter who wanted to defend Jesus, the disciples who wanted to encourage him to go the other way, but sometimes Jesus would move in a different way than what they thought or where they thought he should move. You see, sometimes there will be people in your life who don't understand your cup because it is not their cup. It is God's cup for you. 
And what happens is they will do the wrong thing to prevent you. Sometimes they will say the wrong things to distract you. Often they will walk the wrong path to disappoint you. Simon Peter did that multiple times in the life of Jesus while he did his public ministry for three and a half years. And often you and I have people who just don't understand our cup, that the will of God is very clear and we are wrestling, but sometimes those people just don't understand. So I would also tell you there's another thing. There will be always a, a temptation uh, to drop your cup. Those temptations to drop your cup in, in, in midstream will always happen. In fact, that's what the Garden of Gethsemane prayer was about, uh, not drinking the cup, if you will. You know, many of us, we don't want to drink the cup that God has given us because we are afraid that if we do God's will in our lives, it's going to affect the lives of others. Do you know that? Uh, it was Oswald Chambers in his devotional book that I love, that I've used for decades, my utmost for his highest, that his January 11th uh, devotional spoke concerning that. He said, when you do the will of God, it will always affect others. Can I tell you a quick story? When, when God called my wife and me to uh, leave a mega church in Houston, Texas, and go and plant a church uh, in Pueblo, Colorado, it was a difficult season. I, I need to tell you, it was difficult in that we were saying goodbye to friends that we dearly loved in a ministry that God had developed uh, in a wonderful way. And we were going to live in a town where we knew just a, a couple of people. And we would have to pull our children out of the schools that they had known and felt safe in to take a brand new step and a brand new journey in their lives. And I got to be honest with you, it was difficult. It was difficult on my family. Uh, the house we moved into was a third of the size. Um, in fact, uh, we went with no salary, and that was difficult too. And all of that, with that pre pressure of doing something we had never done before, I, I should be transparent with you and tell you it was a difficult season in the life of my children. And for me to do the will of God, what he had called me to do, affected my family. But I look back on that now and realize that God is a good God, and he wants to make a big difference in your life. And he knows how to shape your family and shape your children for his glory and even though you may go through a difficult time and you are obeying God's will, sometimes as you obey God's will, it can have an adverse effect on other people. Do you understand that? This is a very important principle to grab hold of because it's part of the Christian journey. When Jesus drank the cup, it dispersed the disciples. The security that they had was dashed to pieces. And you and I need to understand that it will cost not only you, but it will also cost others to drink the cup. And many of us don't want to do that because that's exactly what, what's happening in, in our lives. We, we don't want to hurt someone. Because that temptation to drop the cup, 
because it will hurt someone or drop the cup because we haven't prayed it all the way through knowing that this is what God wants us to do or in the place of pain, we're being so squeezed, we, we, we can't maintain our grip on the cup. It creates a problem. And so therefore, you have one of two options. Number one, either give up and run or give in and go through the middle. And today, I want to encourage you, don't give up and run. Find the power of God in your life, the strength of God, the presence of God to go all the way through the middle. But I also need to tell you, there will always be one more battle to win as you drink the cup. Do you understand that you must win the battle over your flesh? You must win the battle over your soul? That that battle of physical and emotional uh, conflict will always be there. But honestly, the, uh, the battle over your soul, what you want, what your flesh is telling you to do is, is always right there to take the easy way out rather than to do even the hard things that God has called you to do. Understand that. Winning over emotions will always be a struggle in, in our lives. But I also want to share with you one final thing. When you drink your cup, you will see the hand of God use your life for his kingdom and his glory. However, his, it will often be in the rearview mirror. Because as you take that bitter cup that is full of God's invitation and his grace. And you drink whatever it is inside. I need to tell you that God has a purpose for it, to keep you warm. However, you may not see till later how God has used the drinking of the cup he has given you for his glory. So the question is, how do you drink the cup? Let me give you a couple of quick things. Very, very importantly, listen to this. First of all, you drink the cup, just like Jesus, in the fellowship with friends as far as they can go. <clears throat> your friends are not going to be able to go the entire journey. Remember, this is your cup, and they can only walk with you so far. Look at what happened to Jesus. They would abandon him, they would betray him, they would deny him. Maybe you have friends like that too. But drink the cup in fellowship with your friends who love the Lord as far as they can walk with you. I would also tell you, drink the cup in prayer, seeking the Lord for his perfect will and your perfect submission. That's a that's to be an ongoing thing. Also, drink the cup for the glory of God as you walk through lonely, dark times, if indeed the drinking of the will of God upon your life and in your life creates those lonely times. Drink the cup. But I also would tell you, drink the cup for the sake of others. Instead of your desire for comfort and insulation, from pain, drink the cup, do it for others. Because God often will call you to lead your family. And by calling you to lead your family means that you are willing to drink the will of God for their sake. And you are trying to align yourself with the will of God, not only for your life, but for the impact that they need to see their parent, their friend. I'm speaking to many of you who are students too. And God wants to use you in the life of your friends as they see you say no to sin and say yes to God. It will make a great impact upon their lives. So drink the cup for the sake of others. But most of all, Drink the cup that God gives you with eyes on the future. Because the immediate 
pain and discomfort you may go through just becomes part of your story. And you know, I, I told you about the, <laughs> the, uh, the broken heater. Well, today I drive a vehicle that doesn't have a broken heater. It actually works, which is a good thing. And honestly, you need to realize that God will see you all the way through. I love the words to this uh, song that uh, a group sang years ago called Press On. The words go like this. And I'm standing up not to sing. <laughs> Here's how the words go. When the valley is deep, when the mountain is steep, when the body is weary, when we stumble and fall, when the choices are hard, when we were battered and scarred, when we spend our resources, when we've given our all, in Jesus' name, press on. In Jesus' name, press on. Dear Lord, with the prize clear before our eyes, we find the strength to press on. In Jesus' name, we press on. In Jesus' name, we press on. Dear Lord, with the prize clear before our eyes, we find the strength to press on, to press on. And it's to you that I talk to today who need to press on and drink the cup. But many of you are saying to me, you're talking to me like I am Jesus, but I'm not. I'm full of flesh and blood, and I, I'm not like Jesus. Here's the deal. Yes, I am talking to you like you're Jesus because if you know Christ is Lord of your life, he lives on the inside of you right now, and he has given you everything you need to take the cup, drink the cup, and press on to do his will. And I'm praying that that's exactly what you will do today. Drink the cup and do it now. Thanks for watching Higher Aim with Dr. Kurt Dodd. Visit higheraim.org for more free resources. There, you can access our daily devotions, sign up for our monthly teaching letter, even download the Higher Aim app, and so much more. Just go to higheraim.org to get started.